will be them bring blessing. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, and God bless you in Jesus' name. We want to sing the chorus now. And as we sing, if you have prayer requests, prayer requests, you have testimony, maybe God has touched your life. God has done something great in your life during the just concluded Easter Global Crusade. Our counselor is waiting for you at the back. Submit your prayer request. You can share your testimony with him. Your testimony will be recorded. An opportunity will be given to you to come out and share your testimony with the people of God here. And we will connect this testimony through all our social media and other people will hear your testimony. God of heaven and earth will give us testimony in Jesus' name. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master key. Hallelujah. Prayer is the master key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and then we pray. Prayer is the master key. Hallelujah. Jesus started. Shadrach, oh Lord, deliver Meshach, oh Lord, deliver Bednego, oh Lord, deliver me, amen. Rise up on your feet and sing that song. It's a song of deliverance. Oh Lord, deliver Dana, oh Lord, deliver Peter. Oh Lord, deliver Paul. Oh Lord, deliver me. Amen. He will deliver you from sickness. God will deliver you from poverty. Oh Lord, deliver Shadrach. Oh Lord, deliver Nation. Oh Lord, deliver Bethlehem. Oh Lord, deliver me. Amen. Oh Lord, 
shall Oh Lord, deliver bed me go Oh Lord, deliver me, amen shall be delivered from waywardness from every spiritual bondage. Oh Lord, deliver Shadrach. Oh Lord, deliver nation. Oh Lord, deliver bad people. Oh Lord, deliver me. Amen. According to St. John, I want to read verse 19 and verse 30. John chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus therefore has received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. He bound down his head and gave up the ghost. He perfected the work of redemption. I want you to lift your voice to God Almighty. That today, today, every activity of Satan will put an end to it in my family. Every activity of wicked one put an end to it in my business. Every dominion of Satan in the life of my children. Lord Jesus said it is finished. Lord put an end to it today. Every activity of Satan in my spiritual life. Lord put an end to it. Open your mouth and pray. Pray, 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 pray. It is over. Every dominion of sickness, every dominion of Satan. God will put an end to it today. Every activity of Satan. It is finished. It is finished. Pray God by his word and say today, today, every activity of Satan shall be paralyzed. Every activity of Satan in my family, in my business, in my marriage, God will paralyze it to it. God will paralyze it today. God will put an end to it today. Every sickness, it is finished. Open your mouth and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Let everyone hear your voice. The Bible says, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Let everyone hear your voice. If you are praying in your house, you can pray a silent prayer. But this one, open your mouth and say, Lord, every battle of life, put an end to it today in my life, in my family, in our nation, in our country, in our church. Every battle of life, put an end to it today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We want to pray one prayer for the church. Just raise up your hand to heaven. Multitude of people gave their life to Christ during the global Easter retreats. Our labor will not be in vain. We are going to pray all the souls that gave their life to Christ during this global Easter retreat. Lord, establish them in the church. 
May them to be abiding souls in Jesus' name. Let's pray that prayer for the church now. All the souls that God has added into his kingdom during the global Easter retreat, God will make them to be an abiding souls. God will establish them in the church. As we are going to join, go for the Thursday revival tomorrow, we shall see them in our churches. God will make them to be an abiding soul. They will not go back to sin. They will not go back to the world. All the backslider that God has restored, God will not allow them to go back to sin. They will continue with the Christ. Let's pray for those that have received miracle. That miracle shall be permanent. You that you are here this morning, you have received the blessing of God. That blessing, Satan will not take it away from you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We want to pray for River State and Bernie Kingdom. We want to pray for our governor and his executive council and other arms of government in the state that God will give them divine wisdom. Divine wisdom to pilot the affairs of this state. God will give them divine directive. Open your mouth and pray. Our governors, our uh, uh, the every members of his council, the commissioners, the local government chairman, and all our councillors and the people that work in the government in the river state. Lord, give them divine wisdom, divine direction, divine direction. Help them, O oh Lord, to maintain peace and order. There shall be peace and progress in river state. Let's ask God. For security in river state, there shall be freedom of movement on the sea. God of heaven and earth will secure this state for us. Bandits will never have access to river state. Evil people we shall never have access to river state. All the sea pirates, God will arrest them. They will not, God will paralyze their activities. Let's hand over this state into the hands of God. That God that wash over Israel, He will wash over this state. Let's pray for Bonnie Kingdom. Let's ask God. To wash over our life in this burning kingdom. All the criminals that are doing evil on the sea, God will arrest them. In all our fishing ports, there shall be peace, there shall be security. Pray and talk to the Lord. The Bible says, let God arise and let his enemy be scattered. All those criminals that are coming to collect our fishermen engine, they don't want people, of, people to leave. They don't want them to do their business, their legitimate business. Has got to scatter them. All the criminals that are patrolling the sea, collecting engine. God will scatter them wherever they are. God will arrest them. God will put an end to their activities. There shall be peace. There shall be freedom of movement. There shall be unity. Open your mouth and pray. For River State, for Bonnie Kingdom. God will secure this island for us. Terrorists, bandits, we never have access to this island. Hand over your community into the hands of God here in Bonnie Kingdom. God that wash over Israel will wash over our community. If we wash over this island, there shall be freedom of movement. There shall be freedom of fellowship. Open your mouth and pray. Commit our kings, our council, local government chairman, and all the ESCO that the fear of God will build upon them. There shall be fear of God in their life to direct the affairs of this kingdom. Pray for the kings and his cabinet. Fear of God upon them. Pray for job opportunity. In Bonnie Kingdom, there shall be job. Pray several projects shall come to reality. Has God to give you job? Has God to give our brethren job in this Prince Seven project? In this island, every members of this church, God will give them job. All our contractors, God shall be hoping for them. My sister, my brother, pray. Pray, pray, and talk to the Lord. Pray and talk to the Lord. Hand over all our contractors. All unemployment. All our contractors shall receive a big contract. Let's ask God to provide job opportunity for our brethren in this church. Open your mouth and pray. Pray for yourself as well. Job opportunity. If you are a contractor or you are working under a contractor, pray. Before the end of this train seven, we shall win the big contracts. A contract that will make people to say, yes, God is answering prayer in the palace. God will give to our contractors. There shall be job opportunity in this island. All our brethren in the church shall be employed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are going to hand over our family into the hands of God. The Bible says, how pleasant it is 
for a brethren to dwell in peace and unity. Ask God for unity in your family. Ask God for peace in your family. Ask God and say, Lord, my family and hand over into your hand. There shall be unity in my family. My children, among my children, there shall be unity. Between me and my wife, there shall be unity. There shall be peace. Unity in serving God. Me and my Ask God that all the children that God has given us, we shall serve God together. Eliminate every spirit of poverty in my family. Eliminate every spirit of poverty in our church. Eliminate every spirit of poverty in our family. Oh, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, eliminate every spirit of poverty in my family. Every power, every spirit of poverty. Lord, destroy it in my family this, this, morning. this morning. Open your, open your mouth and pray. pray. Open your mouth and pray. pray. Lord, send out prosperity. prosperity. Send down prosperity. prosperity. Send down prosperity. Every spirit of poverty shall be eliminated from our family, from the church. God will eliminate every spirit of poverty this morning. Talk to the Lord in your life, in my life. Every spirit of poverty shall be eliminated. Lord, send down prosperity upon our family, upon our church. Jesus mighty name we pray if you are not sick this few minutes don't sit if you are not sick stand up we are in warfare prayer as a soldiers of Christ enemy will not defeat you in Numbers chapter 23 I'm reading verse 28 and Balak broke Balaam Unto the tomb of Peel, that look at that town, Jeshmo. And Bala said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me for seven bullock and seven rams. That altar is an evil altar. You all know Bala was a prophet, Bala was a king. He, Bala was employed that he should place cause upon the children of Israel. We know what happened there. And he said, he build, you should build seven altar. That altar is an evil altar. Every evil altar that enemy has built around your family, around your marriage, around your children, around your business, shall collapse by fire in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and say, Lord, let every evil altar be scattered. Altar of affliction. Every demonic altar, every astral altar, shall be scattered by fire. Open your mouth and pray. You can pray more than that. Every evil altar that enemy has built around my family, fire of God, consume and scatter them this morning. Let every evil altar be scattered. Altars of affliction be scattered. Altar of death be scattered. Every evil altar built around your business shall collapse by fire. Rise up and pray. Every demonic altar, altar the enemy has built around your family shall scatter by fire. In 
Jesus mighty name we pray a louder amen in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 19 and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee yes a louder amen for they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee for I am with thee say the Lord to deliver thee God will deliver you from every principality powers that is waging war against your spiritual life. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Say, Holy Ghost, arise! Every unseen battle that enemy is waging against me in the realm of the spirit, Lord, fight for me this morning. Lord, fight for me this morning. Lord, give me victory this morning. Lord, fight for my family this morning. Every war that enemy is waging against my spiritual life, against my family, against our business. Lord, fight for me this morning. Lord, fight for me this morning. Let my enemy be disappointed. Lord, destroy the plan of my enemy this morning. Lord, fight for my children this morning. Lord, fight for my family this morning. Lord, fight for me this morning. The Bible said they will fight against me, but they will not prevail against me. This morning, oh Lord, every war that enemy is waging against my family, Lord, fight for my family this morning. Lord, give me victory this morning. Lord, put my enemy to shame this morning. Let every plan of my enemy be scattered. God will fight for you. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle is Lord. God that fought for the children of Israel, he will fight this battle. God will give us victory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give me a louder amen. In Psalm 68 verse 1, the psalmist says, let God arise and let his enemy be scattered. Give me a louder amen. Let them also that hate you, those that hate me, flee before me, before you. Give me a louder amen. Say, Lord Jesus! Oh! Shout! Shout! Lord Jesus! Arise on behalf of my family. Wherever the enemy has gathered, wherever the enemy has gathered, arise and scatter them. Arise and scatter my enemy. Hold the enemy of progress. Hold the enemy that gang up against my spiritual life. Lord, scatter them this morning. Scatter them in the forest. Scatter them in their kingdom. Wherever the enemy has gathered, against us, against our family, against the church. Lord, scatter their plan this morning. By fire, by force this morning. Let all our enemies be scattered. Open your mouth and pray. Every evil manipulation against our spiritual life. Every evil manipulation against our mother shall be scattered every evil manipulation against our business God will scatter you this morning open your mouth and pray God will arise on our behalf all the enemy of progress shall be scattered all the enemy that gang up against your marriage God will scatter them God will scatter their plan every evil conspiracy Against your destiny, against our destiny, against our family, God will scatter you this morning. The Bible says, Surely they shall surely gather, not by me, whosoever that gather because of you, because of me, they shall fall for our sake. Every evil conspiracy against our business, God will scatter you this morning. Lion, tribal Judah, arise on my behalf this morning. Wherever the enemy of progress are gathered against my progress, Lord, scatter them this morning. Every full conspiracy against our marriage, against our destiny, against our children. Lord Jesus, arise on my behalf. Arise on behalf of our family. Scatter them this morning. Every 
walk of darkness, every principality, wherever they gather against our Lord, God will scatter them by fire. Every evil manipulation shall be scattered against our marriage, against our business, against our destiny. God will scatter you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. Open your mouth and pray. Say, Every establishment of devil in my body, in my home, in my business, Lord, this morning, dismantle it by fire. Dismantle it by fire. Anything that God has not planted, that the enemy has planted into my body, Lord, uproot it and root them out of my body. Open your mouth and pray. Every establishment of devil in your home, in your marriage, shall be dismantled by fire. I believe you can pray more than that. Every establishment of devil in our business, God will dismantle it this morning. Every evil plantation in your body, you are sleeping, you are hitting in the dream. All the poison the enemy has deposited into your body shall be rooted out now. Root them out by the power that's in the name of Jesus. All the poison in your blood, all the poison you have mashed on the ground shall be rooted out from my head to the feet of my toe. Every evil arrow shall be rooted out of my body. You are sleeping. An enemy is coming to you in the dream to molest you. Whatsoever they have deposited into your body, the fire of God will root them out now. The fire of Holy Ghost will neutralize and flush out every poison from your body. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Give me a louder amen. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 20 and 21. And I will make thee unto these people a fence blessing, blessing wall. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, says the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hands of the wicked. Give me a louder amen. Rise up. God will deliver you from the hand of the witches and wizards. The wicked one that want to take your life before your time, God will deliver you. All the enemy of progress, God will deliver you from their hand. All those wicked ones that are planning evil against your marriage, God will deliver you in Jesus' name. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Terrible people that after your life, God will redeem you. God will deliver you. Your children shall be delivered from the hand of the wicked. From that demonic spirit that is tormenting you in the dream. God will deliver you in Jesus' name. Say, Lord Jesus, deliver me this morning from the hand of the wicked. Deliver my children this morning from the hand of the wicked. The wicked one in my family. The wicked one in my marriage. The wicked one in the place of my work. Lord, deliver me from their hand. Open your mouth and pray. Say, Lord, deliver me this morning from the hand of the wicked. The wicked one that wants to take my life before my time. Lord, deliver me. Deliver my children from the hand of the terrible. Deliver my wife from the hand of the wicked. Deliver our husband from the hand of the wicked. Open your mouth and pray. If you know the meaning of the wicked ones, you will pray more than that. All those wicked ones that want to take your property by force, God will deliver you from their hand. Pray. This morning, O oh Lord, deliver my family from the hand of the wicked. All the wicked ones that want to turn the life of my family, the life of my children, they want to turn it to non-entity. Lord, deliver my children from their hand. Deliver my wife, my husband from their hand. From the hand of the wicked. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver my family. Lord, deliver my business. From the hand of the wicked. Lord, deliver my ministry.
from the hand of the wicked. Lord, redeem my children from the hand of the terrible. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Finally, if you are sitting down right now, I will read from the scripture and you are going to pray this prayer. Pray this prayer with violent anger. People are dying every day. People are dying every day. One of our brothers in Agaja, Tokumbi, brought a, a sister, daughter. And the guy had been staying with them. As they were preparing for the retreat, the guy just fell sick. And before they brought her out of the village to St. Peter, she gave up. She died. This morning, Isaiah 28, verse 18 is for you. And your confinement with death shall be disanu. Disanu means cancel. And your agreement with her shall not stand. You will not go to her fire. And the book of Psalms, Psalm 118, verse 17 says, you shall not die. Your children will not die. Your husband will not die. You will not die. You will live in Jesus' name. Rise up and say every covenant of death against me, against my family. I cancel you with blood of Jesus. I cancel you with blood of Jesus. Every covenant of death against me, against my wife, against my children, against my grandchildren, against my in-law. I cancel you with blood of Jesus. I shall not die. I will not use my hand to bury my children. This year, 2022, I will see the end of this year. Every covenant of death against any members of our church will cancel you with the blood of Jesus. Our pastors in this people Bible church on the region and their family, every covenant of death against death, against their family will cancel with the blood of Jesus. Talk to the Lord. I shall not die. I will not use my hand to bury my wife. My children will not use their hand to bury me. I will live long to fulfill my dreams. Open your mouth and pray. Every confinement of death against you, against your family, against me, we cancel you with the blood of Jesus. Every confinement of death against any members of our church, we cancel you with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your presence in this meeting. Thank you for answering our prayer. We return all the glory to you. Father, take all the glory in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, every work of devil in our life, your word said for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest. That he might destroy the work of devil. Sickness is work of devil. Sin is work of devil. Poverty is work of devil. Failure and disappointment is work of devil. Miscarriage is work of devil. Premature death is work of devil. Every work of devil in our life, in our family, Lord, destroy it in Jesus' name. You are free. You are delivered. You are, you are safe. You will not use your hand to bury any members of your family. The numbers of your days, you will fulfill it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In louder amen. We are still waiting for your testimony. You can have your seat. If you have a testimony, quickly go to the back. Before we, read, before we pray over this prayer request. And I want to assure you, we have our testimony already. Because... This global retreat, God has touched our life. And by the special grace of God, you will share your testimony with people of God in Jesus' name. We want to pray over this prayer request. Somebody wrote, said, pray for my wife to stop attack. Pray for grace of God and Lord deliver me and heal me. Let's pray for that individual. Let's pray for his wife. His family shall be delivered from every spiritual attack. Let's pray for them for healing. Let's open our mouth and pray. In Jesus' 
mighty name we pray. We have another prayer request here. Say pray. Brethren should pray with me that God should perfect all his promise in my family in everything. God will perfect everything that consigned that individual in Jesus' name. God should make a temple God should make a temple group for his dwelling and keep me properly in all his work as we, as we pray over this prayer request. That individual, God will make his body a dwelling place in Jesus' name. God should take away all difficulties in my life and the life of my children. God will do it in Jesus' name. God should make all my customers to remember me. Your customer will remember you. Those that are owing you money, they will not be at rest until when they pay that money in Jesus' name. God should take every challenges of sickness and death out of his family or out of our family. Let's pray for that individual that God, this is the prayer of our brother or sister that anything that concerns his family, God will perfect it. Open your mouth and pray. Every challenges in this family, let's pray that God will turn it to testimony. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is another prayer request. Say, God, give me grace to win soul. You will win soul for Christ. Give me a louder amen. Give me grace to win soul into your kingdom. In Jesus' name. And God destroy every power working against my blessing. God will destroy every power working against that individual blessing in Jesus' name. Let's open our mouth and pray for that individual. Grace to win soul into the kingdom of God. God will grant unto him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Another prayer request is, I want God to help me to pass my exam. You will pass your exam. I want God to give me grace to serve him. Grace to serve God. Oh, faithfully, God will grant unto you in Jesus' name. I want God to help me to understand anything I'm reading. God will give you divine wisdom, spirit of excellence in Jesus' name. Let's open our mouth and pray for that individual. Divine wisdom, grace to serve him. Divine wisdom God will grant to that individual. Pray that God will heal all his sickness. Pray that God will take away sickness from that individual body. There shall be healing. There shall be deliverance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is another prayer request. Say, I want God to give me his blessing, his wisdom, understanding, and deliver me from every satanic manipulation, let's open our mouth and pray for that individual. Open your mouth and pray. God will deliver that our brother from every satanic manipulation. God will deliver every member of his family, his father, his mother. God will wash over their life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is another prayer request. I want God to open heaven for me. Heaven will be open for you and your family in Jesus' name. I want to, all my, I want my mother to be healed from sickness. Your mother shall be healed. I want God to provide for me a better job. That God will give you a job opportunity before the end of the month in Jesus' name. I want God to destroy all plan of enemy against my life. So shall it be in Jesus' name. I want God to touch the people that promise me job. God will touch them. They will fulfill their promise in Jesus' name. I want... God to protect my family and also bring me sa safe journey. Let's open our mouth and pray for that individual. As we pray for that individual, God will grant our journey mercy, open heaven, and God will take away sickness from the body of her mother. Let's pray for God to provide a good job for that individual. All the plan of enemy against their family, God will frustrate it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The last prayer request, say pray for me. As I come back from the retreat with my husband, my son, named Blessing, entered his father's room and started and started telling him that there was a man that is holding money looking for a house. And the father immediately accepted to collect the money without any concern. Let's pray. That that dream, that revelation will come to pass over that family. Open your mouth and pray. Say, when I was about going out from key leaders meeting, now he sent blessing to call me. Then when I enter into his room, his first son brought out the money and said, 
take to your husband. So shall it be. God will make that dream, that revelation to come to pass in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet. We want to agree together that all these prayer requests, God will turn it to testimony. Testimony over this prayer request. As we hand over this prayer request to God this morning, God will give every individual that wrote this prayer request testimony, testimony, testimony. God will turn this prayer request to testimony. Our prayer shall be answered. Whatsoever we have written that is in line with the word, with the will of God and the word of God, God will grant us our heart desire. God will turn all this prayer request to testimony. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning because you have answered our prayer. This is the confidence that we have that when we pray according to your will, that you will hear us. All that we have asked this morning, answer our prayer, offer this prayer request in Jesus' name. Grant us our heart desire. We cover all this prayer request with blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, as we are waiting for our Father in the law, the man of God is loaded. Please, before you wait for our Father in the law, we have a testimony. God will give us testimony in Jesus' name. Let's have our seat. I want to quickly call on Sister Miracle. Thank God. Please, come forward. Come and share your testimony. Come quickly. We just received the testimony now. And I pray God will continue to give us testimony in Jesus' name. him i will praise him i will praise his holy name he has done so much for me i will praise him i will praise him forevermore brethren praise the lord praise the living god i have nothing to give to this mighty god this god loved me so much I want to thank God as God has preserved my life up to today. I've been sick every day, day and night for eight years and now. But God preserved my life up to today. I want to thank God on Thursday that I'm coming to this, uh, coming to a retreat. In the morning, I got an accident in my home. Just to go and remove block in my fridge, I don't know. I used knife, tried to bring the block. I spoiled the fridge that very day. So coming, I just let me, let me prepare and come for the retreat. On my way coming... I don't know that devil see plan death for me. So on the way, I just saw a, a, this a army motor just with, with a speed to overtake the coaster. Look at me and the, I mean, look at the bike man and the motor. But I don't know how God removed the tire of the bike, putting it by the side of the road they are walking. And God delivered me that day. I said, the name of the Lord be highly exalted in Jesus' name. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. That deliverance shall be permanent. You will not die before your time. You will not die. You will not involve in accident. God that watch over Israel, we watch over our lives in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet as we are waiting for our Father in the Lord. I want you to pray and say, Lord, by the power of anointing this morning, every yoke shall be broken. Every yoke shall be broken. Through his servants, the anointing will flow into our life. The man of God is loaded. He just came back from a protocol. And I believe that God is going to use the man of God for us this morning. Open your mouth and say this morning to your servant. Bless me this morning. Touch me this morning. Supernatural touch through supernatural intervention. Open your mouth and pray. That through your servant this morning, God will touch me, touch my brain, touch my body, touch my soul, touch my family. Talk to the Lord. Through the ministration of our Father in the Lord, God will touch us. He will touch our family. There shall be supernatural touch. Supernatural touch through supernatural intervention. Through the ministration of his servant, God will visit all this morning at point of our need. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Prepare your heart. Prepare yourself everywhere. Say, Lord, this morning, my coming here this morning will not be in vain. Your servant has his, open his mouth this morning. You will accompany this ministration with signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders.
Amen. I said amen. amen. We shall take this chorus together. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee must bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Christ is Lord in of your life, of our families. He has risen from the dead. Christ is Lord. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Is the Lord. Is the Lord. Is the Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. Christ is. Hallelujah. Every must bow. Every name must bow. Every tongue must confess Jesus Christ is the Lord. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess Jesus Christ is the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus is Lord Jesus. Over all things, Jesus is. Amen. Jesus is the. Sing hallelujah, Jesus. The Lord Jesus is the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord. I want you to just lift up your voice and magnify the name of our great God for the testimony of our sister and for who God is to you, what God has been doing in your life and your family appreciate God. God is above all. God is above your challenges. It's above your fears. It's above your discouragement. It's above your sickness. It's above your troubles. Magnify the name of our great God above your situations. Every knee bow before him. Every tongue must confess to the praise of our God that Jesus is the Lord in your life. Christ is Lord in your family. Is the Lord over all situations. Is the controller of all things. Is the Lord of the whole universe. And there is no power that is 
greater than his power every power is subject to him in jesus name we pray if you believe jesus is lord can you shout a better amen, amen. if you believe every knee will bow before before him anything that is trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of god in your life if you believe they will all bow shout a better amen, amen. if you believe every tongue no matter the tongue the tongue of witches and wizard enemy whatever be the tongue and all the tongues that have confessed negative things about you and your family if you believe every one of them will confess Christ as Lord in your life and family, shout a better amen. amen. Whatever may look negative in your life, God will convert it to positive. Amen. I show you this very morning, as we go through the word of God, may God give us eyes of understanding so that everything that God has for us this morning, you will have it. Amen. You will receive it. See, it is one thing to come and hear the word, but the understanding of the word is important because every miracle you need is there. It's inside. Father, I want to thank you because this morning you want to bless your people. You want to touch our hearts. You want to change our situations. Lord, as we go through your word, I pray that your word will literally come to pass in our life. Everything you are going to speak as we read the Bible we want to see it in our lives. We want to see it in our family. We want to see it in our situations. Lord, I pray that your word will be made life within us and without us. Lord, I pray that everything we are going to hear about the scriptures and the, as we read the Bible, talk about this one and talk about that one, I am praying, Father, we shall appropriate it in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not look at the word as something strange. We we'll look at the word and apply it to ourselves, our situation. Thank you, Father, because it is done. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Give me a better amen. amen. Once again, you are welcome back from a, a global Easter retreat. I am led this morning to share with you on the topic the act of God versus Deacon. Can we all say that together? Again. Say it very, very well. Say it more convincingly. Now let me quickly say this before we read the scriptures. It's like one saying, you see, one side is the ark of God. I will give you the description of the ark. And then another one is Dacon, another God, not God. I'll give you the description of that. Then it's like saying God versus Satan. Now, if God and Satan is to go into a combat, a battle, who will be a winner? Answer me now. Who will be a winner? Now, if light and darkness that to go together, which one will prevail? Answer me very well. If a believer and all the enemies around are engaged in a battle, whom do you think will win? Answer me very well. Answer me with understanding. It's like saying Israelites versus Egyptians. And we know the story of what happened when Israelites were in the land of Egypt. And see all the things that God did against Egyptians. And see the way he preserved, protected his own children. And when the appointed time came for them to come out of the land of Egypt, see the mighty things that God did through them and for them. Now, Egyptians can never be a match to the Israelites. So, the ark of God, representing God, and Dekon, that's the Philistines' God. I told you I will give you the description of those things. Now, we want to look at 
1 Samuel chapter 5 from verse 1 to 12. I pray that God will open our eyes of understanding because every trouble you have is like a decon. The sin in your life is like a decon. Sickness in your body is like a, a decon. And then all the trouble of life and all the confusion that is struggling and battling, fighting, making noise against your life, if like a decon, what happened to decon in this scripture we are going to read will happen to make trouble in your life. Your amen is as if you didn't understand me very well. I say what happened to decon in the scripture we are going to read will happen to every trouble in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at 1 Samuel chapter 5. We want to read from verse 1 to 12. 1 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. I read. And the Philistines took the ark of God... Can you imagine? Because the ark symbolizes God's presence. God's presence. God's glory. You can't catch God. You can't catch light. You can't catch fire. Philistines made a very silly mistake. And the Philistines, yes, they took the ark of God because Israelites did evil. And they sinned against God. As a result of that, that gave them the right to take away the ark of God and they feel they can now begin to manipulate the ark of God, put the ark of God anywhere with anything. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Asdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dacon. That's Dacon, their own gods. And set it by Dacon. Light and darkness can never work together. Satan and God can never be kept together. There'll be an explosion. You see, evil and good can never mesh, be mesh together. And so, they made a mistake. And they brought the ark of God... And they put it side by side by their God's decon. And when day of Asdod arose early on the morrow, that's the following morning, behold, decon was falling upon his face. Enemy must bow. Decon was falling upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. Evil will bow before good. Sickness will bow before you. Yeah. Satan will bow before God. Look at this. All the troubles of life. And so, before the act of the Lord, and they took the corn again, and set him in his place again. It does not matter how many times they set up the corn, the corn must continue to fall. And when they arose early on the morrow, Morning, behold, Dacon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. Before the ark of the Lord, tell me, I tell you after today, if you understand these very scriptures I'm reading to you, and what I'm going to tell you right now, you will see every enemy's bow before your feet in the name of Jesus Christ. The ground before the ark of the Lord and the head of Dacon this time around. Not just mere falling, the, the head of Dacon and both the palms of his hands were cut off from the threshold. Only the, 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 the stump of Dacon was left to him. Your enemy shall be broken into pieces. Your trouble shall be broken into pieces. Look at it. Therefore, neither the priest of Dacon, nor any that come into Dacon's house, tread on the threshold of Dacon in Asdod unto this day. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Asdod. 
and he destroyed them and sm smote them with emeralds. <coughs> Sorry, please. With emeralds, even as dot and the coast thereof. And when the men of Asdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of God of Israel shall not abide with us. Something will happen in the camp of your enemies. He said, This one we are seeing now, we cannot allow this ark to abide here. Because as long as the, the ark continues to remain there, you'll be causing havoc in our camp. Is it not the same thing that Israelites, Egyptians were saying to, Israel, uh, to, to Pharaoh? He said, Pharaoh, you continue to allow Israelites to remain in Egypt? Do you want everybody to perish in Egypt? What do you want Egypt to turn to? It's better to allow these people go because their presence in Egypt is a terror. And I want to tell you that our presence in the camp of Satan is a terror. If you know you are right and you know yourself, and the people said, and when the men of Asdor saw, your enemy will see something. Your amen is as if you are not too serious. I say your enemy will see something. You know? And when the men of Asdor saw that it was so, they said, the ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us. Enough is enough. For his son is saw upon us and upon Dacon our God. All those who fear useless gods, who fear enemies, who fear witches and wizards, who fear demons, it's unfortunate. They will still claim to be born again, to be Christian, student of God. They say, we have Christ in us. It's the devil and the wicked ones that must be afraid of you. You don't need to be afraid of them. The people said, this act cannot continue to dwell here. There's a problem already in our midst. Look at verse 8. And sent therefore and gathered all the laws of the Philistine unto them and said, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? You know what happened here? These people acknowledge the power of the ark of the God of Israel. Your enemies will acknowledge the power of your God. The favor of your God. The blessings of your God. Say, so what shall we do? With the ark of the God of Israel. And they answered. What did they say? Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto God. And they carried the ark of the God of Israel about thither. And it was so that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. Anywhere the ark go to, it caused confusion, caused commotion. Because you cannot tame the ark of God. You cannot catch the ark of God. The ark of God has the power to stand for itself, to represent itself. I want to tell you from today, your enemy will not catch you. Your enemy cannot just do anything he likes with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at it. And it was so that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great. And they had embrows in their secret parts. Verse 10. Therefore, they sent the ark of God to Eskron. And it came to pass, as the ark of God came to Eskron, that the Eskronites cried out, saying, Trouble has come over. They have brought about the ark of God of Israel to us, to slay us and our people, See, if we understand God's power and presence, there will be cry in the camp of all our enemies. You know, some people travel, prefer to travel, to stay in a place, to go to places. Say, enemy will attack me, which will attack me. That power is there, that power is there. It is not you that you'll be crying for enemies. Enemy will cry because of you. Look at the Bible. 
in verse 11. So they sent and gathered together all the laws of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of God of Israel and let it go again to its own place, I beg, that it slay us not. Terrible things are happening because of his presence and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the men that died not were smitten with the embers. And the cry of the city went up to heaven. You see that? God's presence. The ark of God. Now let me briefly give you the description of first, the deacon. And I told you, whenever you say deacon, we may say that symbolizes God's. You know, apart from this decon God, there are other gods in the world everywhere. Where in some villages you see what people worship, other people worship python, other people worship snake, other people worship one thing or the other. And then you go to some community, they have a, a, almost every family a compound. You see idol there. They prepare a shrine for them where they keep all those things and all that. And you go to play. People just worship anything, worship anything like the Philistines. But what do we really mean by Dekon? Dekon in the Bible is, a represent, is represented as the chief God of the Philistines. He was the chief God. The only God they know. Instead of recognizing the true God who created them, that was the God they know. They saw it as their power, as their strength, as their everything, that, uh, that whenever that God, uh, power is consulted, he will fight for them, he will conquer the enemy for them and instead of trusting the true God they didn't have a true God but that was serving as their own God. Do you know there are people that when they have a problem, they will never remember God, they will not think of prayer they will not have faith in God, they will be running from pillar to post, go to native doctor and have bad list and all that, they are all like Philistines. He was the Philistine God, he was their chief God, not only that a God widely worshipped by the Mesopotamians. Not only Mesopotamians, they also worshipped by Amorites and other people of the ancient Near East and often associated with grain. That was the nature of the God and agriculture and storms. And this Dekon God was a half man and half snake. Half man from this side up, like a human being. From this side down, like snake. And you see two people today, still worshipping snake. Some worship this one, worship that one. And instead of concentrating to worship the true God, they misdirect their loyalty, their worship to a graven image like these people. That's the nature and the description of Dekon. Now we come to the description of the ark of God. Praise the Lord. You know, the ark of God, it was what God commanded Moses to erect. And this ark was made with a very strong wood they call uh, Ocrecia. And it was a very strong wood. But do you know that the ark was properly prepared? Prepared. And that ark also was a symbol of God's presence and God's glory. Look at Exodus chapter 25, verse 10. Exodus 25. Exodus 25. Look at verse 10. Exodus 25. Reading from verse 10. Exodus 25. I read verse 10. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire, a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Praise the Lord. Sorry, 25, I read verse 10. 25 verse 10. I read. And they shall make an ark of sitting or sitting wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. 
and a cubit and a half, the height eh, thereof. Thereof. This is what God told Moses to do to prepare the ark. And that ark was to help them, guide them, and all that, representing God Himself in the midst of them, the present and the symbol of God's presence. So the ark was designed to be symbol of God's presence in the midst of his people and it is also is the common teaching all through this Old Testament in the Old Testament all over the ark of God is being mentioned look at first Samuel chapter 4 I read from verse 4 to 11 in first Samuel chapter Four, from verse 4 to 11. First Samuel chapter 4 verses 4 to 11. First Samuel 4 verse 4 to 11. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Hobni and Phinehas. We are there with the ark of the covenants of God. And when the ark of the covenants of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistine heard the noise of the shout, you know, that tells you the power and the glory of this ark of God. Even the Philistines knew that wherever this ark is, uh, is, uh, appears, something will always happen. But unfortunately, Israelites at this time are sinned against God. And the ark could not work for them as they ought to. The ark, but people fear, if Philistines fear the ark. But the life of the children of Israel, this time around, is not like somebody having the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus Christ, as powerful as he is, will not work in the mouth of a sinner. Am I right? Does that make the name of Jesus Christ powerless? No. Jesus' name is still powerful. The word of God is still powerful. But when one has gone into sin, the life of the person will make the mention of the name of Jesus useless and powerless. So this is exactly what happened here. The act so powerful, Representing the, uh, the presence of God, the glory of God, the power of God. And so when the Philistine had, and when the ark came into the camp of the children of Israel, you know what happened? They shouted. You know what? The beginning of that shout, the power has come now. His glory has come now. And now we are going to win and win the battle. And even the Philistine, the enemy came. They were all afraid. That what's the cause of the shout over there in the camp of the people of God? And they now knew that the ark of God has been brought. And because of that, fear struck them. And because the ark has come, we are in trouble. The ark has come, we are confused. The ark has come, we are defeated. But do you know what happened? They will help, help themselves. The sum of courage. He said, even though the ark has come, and they did that because the children of Israel had sinned. He said, let us look at the Bible. In verse 5. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the, the earth rang again. And when the Philistine heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the, the camp. Verse 7. And the Philistines were afraid because of the ark of God. For they said, God is come. You see that? That's how they saw the ark of God. They saw it as God. His presence. He said because the ark has been brought, then God is come to fight for them against us. God has come now to destroy us. He said God is come into the camp. They saw the ark of God as God's symbol, as God's representative, as God's presence. And they say, the God is come into the camp. But look at verse 7 now. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. 
and they said, what do you see there? Woe unto us. For there has not been such a thing there to fall. Woe unto us who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods. They know the power and the presence of the ark of God. And when they heard the shout, they were afraid. He said, God is coming to the camp. What are we going to do now? We are finished. What is unto us? And then look at what they now did to themselves. In verse 9. Be strong now and quit yourself like men, O ye Philistine. Because if you don't do something now, we are finished. He said that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews as they have been served uh, to you. Quit yourself like men and fight. But do you know what happened here? The, the Philistines defeated Israelites. It's not because the ark of God lost the power. No. Because their life were sinful. It's because they were living in sin. At this point in time, they have done evil against God. And as a result of that, the ark became powerless. Not that the, itself, the ark itself has no power. This same ark that fought for itself that they come, and that when we go to chapter 5, you will see that. But that, that act could not perform, could not work. That tells you that no matter what you know, no matter the name of Jesus Christ you have, and if your life is not in, in correspondence to that name, and it's not in align, or should I call alignment, with the name of Christ, that name will not work. But look at what happened here in verse 10 now. And the Philistine fought, and Israel was smitten. And they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. And the ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli, Hobni and Phinehas, what do you see there? We are slain. We are slain. So that's how they took the ark of God now. And that's okay. This ark of God that makes Israelites to be very proud, boasting every time, okay, we have captured the ark now. So let's take the ark and subject the ark to a place where our useless God is. And they went and placed the ark of God side by side, they come. Then the ark begins to walk. The ark begins to fight. That's what you saw in chapter 5 where we read. So when they took the ark of God, they took the ark of God and placed it in the house of their God, in the house of their God. And I pray today that whatever has made the power of God, the name of Christ, not functional, not powerful in your mouth, you will repent of that thing in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the name of Christ has power. Just like we read about the, the ark of God has power, the ark of God has power to destroy everything, to bring down everything. And the name of Christ, every knee shall bow. But this act could not perform all that wonders because of the life of the people of Israel. And look at that. When they took the ark, they brought it to the house of their God, and the ark now, standing on its own, standing on its own, begin to fight. And I'm telling you today, after today, the ark of God, the power of God, begin to fight on your behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at the next thing there before we pray, because we are going to pray now. I want to go to the next thing. The the description, I've told you the description of the ark. Am I right? I've told you the description of the Dekon. And then we want to talk about the defeat of Dekon. Can you say that together? Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. You know what this means? That means that everything negative in your life will be defeated. Has been defeated. Every idol has a kind of time, a kind of power, and a limited power. And everything that is not of God in your life will be defeated today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at the Bible. In 1 Samuel again, chapter 5. 1 Samuel chapter 5. 1 Samuel chapter 5. First Samuel, chapter 5. We want to read from verse 1 again and see how the ark of God did wonders in a place 
where it was kept. And then you see the how the ark of God started fighting, fighting, fighting. There was nobody supporting the ark of God. All the priests of deacons, they were all there, but none of them could help their gods. But the ark alone, and you know, because it carried the power of God, was just walking, walking. Look at the Bible. And the Philistine took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Asdod. When the Philistine took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dacon and set it by Dacon. And when they of Asdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dacon was falling upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. Can I hear good amen, dear? I say, can I hear good amen, dear? Every idol will fall before you. Every evil man and women will fall before you. No? I will tell you something as we continue. That enemies can gather, but they only gather for one purpose. Do you know why? You know the purpose. You see, sometimes when people are planning for occasion, they spend money. Am I right? Any gathering involves spending. Any gathering involves uh, time. Any gathering involves planning. Let's say somebody is planning for a meeting, a program, because enemies gathered. You don't see them, they gather. And when they are gathering, it takes their time to gather. Sometimes they spend money to make them, maybe the, the gathering effective and then to make it very workable. And they will gather and gather and gather. But I want to tell you as a Christian that all the gathering of the enemy is for one purpose. Do I tell you the purpose? When they gather because of you, the only reason why they gather is to scatter. Praise the Lord. You don't understand me very well. The Bible said they will gather, but they will do what? They will scatter. They spend their time to gather. They waste their time to gather. Even if they spend money to gather together, and they say we are planning, we are planning. At the end of all the spending and the time wasted, is that the end of it is what? It will scatter. Because they will scatter without a plan. They came to plan against you, but they scatter and they cannot plan. We mean that they wasted their time, wasted their money, wasted their energy on your behalf. And I want to tell you that every gathering of the devil against your life, they will scatter before you. Look at the Bible. And then see the God of Dacon there, he fell before the ark of God. Your enemies will fall before you. In verse 4, and when they arose early again on the morrow morning, behold, Dacon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord, falling and falling. And the head of Dacon and both the palms of his hand were cut off upon the threshold. Only the storm of Dacon was left to him. I thought I would hear very good amen, dear. This is how God is going to destroy your enemies. Look at Luke chapter 10. You know, I told you that Dacon was the chief god of the Philistines. He was their chief god. Just like Satan is the principal man. Devil is the master of all demons. You see, Dacon fell before the ark of God. That's what Christ said in the book of Luke chapter 10. Look at verse 18. In Luke chapter 10, verse 18, every enemy, no matter their height, no matter their power, whatever they carry and all that, God will always make them to fall. In Luke chapter 10, I read verse 18. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Are you there? Verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning. What do you see there? Fall from heaven. The same thing. The same thing. They come fell before the ark of God. And Satan fell before the people of God. I see your enemies falling. Poverty falling. Barrenness falling. Failures falling. Fear falling. 
and sickness falling in the name of Jesus Christ. Even sin, they will fall. And he said, I see the devil falling. And that is the word of God. That as they come fell before the ark of God, Satan fall before God's children. And the Bible says something in the book of Romans. Chapter 16. Look at verse 20. In Romans chapter 16, verse 20. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to fear. Your enemies are under your feet. God will do something. Look at it. He has done it already. In Romans chapter 16, what verse? Verse 20. I want us to read that together. Verse 20. Romans chapter 16. In verse 20. One go. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. How? Shortly. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. This is the promise of God. That every enemy before you will fall. You are not going to fall before your enemies. Your enemies are bound to fall before you. Anywhere they are found, whether in the village or in the town, in the place of work, and they're opposing you and they're fighting, don't worry. Just believe God and be sure you are a child of God. Be sure you are in the will of God. And those enemies are bound to fall and their heads will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at the book of Isaiah chapter 54. I read verse 15. In Isaiah chapter 54, I read verse 15. Isaiah 54, verse 15. Isaiah 54, look at verse 15. I read, Behold, they shall surely gather together like all those Philistines and the, all the agents and the servants of the uh, deacons God. They gather together, but not by me. All their scheme was that this act has entered into our camp. This act now, we are going to be deal with it. And this act now, he has not, is not powerless. The people of God now are all defeated and whatever. Look at this. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee, what do you see there again? Shall fall for thy sake. And this is all the way all the time. That people are gathering and are gathering and are planning and are scheming. And this is what we are going to do. We are going to do this to him, do this to her. And they gather. I told you that the only purpose, the only thing they will gain in their gathering is to do what? Is to scatter. You know, they will spend their money to gather, they will scatter. They will spend their time together, they will scatter. So anytime they gather, whether in the village or in the town or in the night or in the dream, anywhere, I see them scattering in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's the word of God. He said they will fall before you. And they will gather, they will fall. Just like they confirm. I tell you today, sin in your life will fall. Sickness in your body will fall. Satan in your family will fall. And all the enemies of progress, you call it enemy of poverty, uh, of prosperity, and whatever it is, you will see them falling. Because if you trust God and believe God, it is not you that will fall before your enemies. God will make your enemy will, to fall before you. And in Philippians chapter 2, look at the Bible. In Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, look at the scriptures. In Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, I read from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2 from, from verse 9. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, what will happen? Every knee should bow of things in heaven and on things on earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. You know, when the ark of God was walking wonders, destroying people, they confessed before him, and all the men of Esdos came together. He said, please, something bad is happening now. And we know why we're having all this trouble because of the presence of the ark of God. Let's see a way to carry this ark out of this place. I cannot stay there. They confess the God of Israel. They confess the act of God. And then the knees and the body and the hands of Deacon's God bow before the act of God. And I want to tell you that whatever it may be terrorizing your life, opposing your life, making noise here and there, telling you you cannot survive, you cannot live, 
just give that thing just a little time. And very soon, like Dacon, that thing will fall. Okay? It will fall before me. Praise the Lord. So today, I want you to understand that when the ark of God is brought before Dacon, Dacon will fall. When Satan is brought before God, Satan will fall. When sickness is brought before a believer, sickness will fall. When barrenness is brought before a child of God, barrenness will fall. When poverty is brought before the child of God, poverty will fall. When sin is brought into the life of a child of God, the sin will fall. And that whatever is negative of evil in your life, see them falling. I say see them falling. Power may be operating somewhere you cannot see. The gather somewhere you cannot see. The plan for somewhere you cannot see. Just see one thing. What are you going to see? Just see them bow. See them falling. See them falling. And they continue to fall in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if your enemy is falling, what happened to you? You stand. If two persons are running and the opponent is falling, the enemy is falling, you keep running. We mean that you keep running. Enemies are falling, you keep standing. And so enemies are falling, a falling man cannot make progress. He cannot excel. We mean that you that will stand will make progress. Will excel. But enemies must fall. They can must fall. You know, you cannot compete with the power of God. Nobody, nobody. And so this morning, as we are going to pray, see every trouble in your life as a decon. See every sickness in your body as a decon. See all the poverty and the trouble that you are passing through in life, whether in the dream or the physical, as a decon. And one thing is good for decon. What is that good thing? Is to fall. Rise up now. Rise up, stand up, close your eyes, open your mouth, pray. The word of God has come to you. You don't need to be motivated to pray. You don't need to be motivated to pray. What are the deacons that is fighting, opposing, standing? Challenging the power, the authority of a great God in your life. See that sin as a decon. See the sickness as a decon. See the poverty as a decon. Bring God before that trouble. You will see them bow. Jesus said, I see Satan falling like lightning. Your enemies will fall before you. They come could not withstand the power of God. The ark of God. There was nobody supporting the ark of God. But the ark of God was fighting, walking. Every other gods are useless. But there's only one true God. The ark represents God's presence. Wherever the presence of God is, there will be wonders. Whether in the temple of Dekon, he performed wonders. Wherever you are, as a child of God, with God's presence in your life, you are for wonders. Enemy may try to stand and fight, but they will fall. You can compete with the power of God. Please make sure you are praying. Let every decon in your life, anything representing decon in your life and family, let them fall. That God will bruise the devil under your feet shortly.
At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That's what happened to Dacon. They come bow before the ark of God. Your enemy shall bow before you. The enemy will bow before the church. Bow before the people of God. The men of Esdod confess the power of God's ark. Walking wonders. Every tongue, every evil tongue of evil men shall confess the power of our God in your life, in our midst. The people saw the mighty hand of God to the ark of God. They were afraid. They feared. Let God begin to do wonders in your life, in your family, in the church that will cause people to fear. They will not come near. Witches and wizards cannot come near. Paths of darkness cannot come near. Cult people cannot come near. Evil power cannot come near. Because of God's presence and power. The name of Christ will not have power in our lips. If sin is there, it will not be effective. But the Bible said, the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Let's pray. And say, God, make the name of Jesus in my lips powerful. Every controversy, every trouble, every problem that's subject to the power of God. Subject to the name of Jesus. Dacon is subject to the ark of God. The ark of God was still there, but Dacon bowed, fell. See your trouble falling, your enemies falling, while you keep standing. They bow, they fall. The trouble in your life will fall. The sickness in your body will fall. The poverty in your family will fall. The fear in your heart will fall. Because of God's presence and power. Enemy may gather, but they will fall for your sake. They may plan, they will fall for your sake. They may spend, they will fall for your sake. Every God against you, their end is to fall. Their end is to fail. Because it will not work. Surely they will gather. But not by me. And whosoever shall gather for your sake, they shall fall. Every gathering not of God against your life, every conspiracy not of God against your family, every plan not of God against the church must fall. No decon will remain in your life. No decon will remain in your family. Every trouble like decon, every sickness like decon, every poverty like decon, that try to stand side by side, the ark of God, Side by side, your progress, 
side by side. Your survival. They cannot survive. They must fall. Don't let any decon survive. Even the house and the temple of Dekon was destroyed when Samson finally bring down when the people gathered together and they were humiliating before their useless gods. And then Samson held the poles and he prayed to God. And that temple, that temple, that temple collapsed. Every temple of Satan, every temple of evil, Every temple of witches and wizards, every temple of shrine of the wicked ones, I want you to pray that God will make them to fall. Every place where the people of evil men gathered, that temple will collapse. That temple will catch fire. Where they gathered to plant evil, where they gather to destroy lives, where they gather to do one bad thing or the other, let that temple catch fire, destroyed. That's what happened when Samson died. He pulled down the temple where all the Philistines gathered to humiliate and serve and worship their gods. That temple destroyed, fell. Which temple are the people set up in the village? Which temple have they set up in the dream? Which temple have they set up in the town? Which temple are they gathering together every night to plan evil? Let the fire of God catch the temple. Destroy the temple. Let that temple fall. And when that happens, there shall be no place of gathering. Not only that the devil fell, the temple also fell. Dekon and his temple must fall. Evil men and their gathering point must collapse. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Can we all rise up? If you believe in your prayer, can you shout a better amen? What do you think will be the outcome of your prayer? It is that every day con, every day con, in form of sin, sickness, Satan, barrenness, poverty, failure, frustration, and their temple will fall. I say their temple will fall. Do you know that when these people of Philistine, their laws and everything, when they captured Samson in the book of Judges, they brought him before the God, this same idol gods, and to be playing and playing, they were making mockery of him. And they were just there celebrating and celebrating and dancing and all that. They made caricature of Samson. But that was the temple where they gathered to worship that useless God. But do you know that Samson prayed a last minute prayer? And he told the person that was guiding because he couldn't see to take him close to the pole and he held the pole of that temple. And then as he prayed with all his force, God gave him that power and that temple fell. I say that temple fell. Every temple of the wicked men in your village, where they gather to plan evil, it will fall. I said it will fall. I said it will fall. 
If you believe God, shout a better amen. Every place they gather to plan evil. And they say, this man, this woman, this boy. I told you that they can succeed in doing that. God will permit them. Just they spend money, they spend time, they come together, they gather together. God says, surely they will gather. They gather in the night, gather in the village, gather in the town. But one thing is certain. And after the gathering, they fall. Amen. After the gathering, they scatter. Amen. I tell you today, everything evil in your life will fall. Amen. Everything negative in your life will fall. Amen. If you believe it by God's grace, something new, very, very specific, spectacular, will happen in your life today. Amen. Mark one thing, just mark one thing. Just mark one thing. Just desire one thing. And say, God, after today, this is what I want to begin to see. After today, this is a change I, I, I want to begin to see. After today, this is how I, I want my body to be. After today, this is how I want my business to be. After today, that thing I couldn't do before, I want to start doing it. That's what we call a desire. And as you have that in your mind, after this prayer, it will come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise up your two hands. The corn has fallen. Father, we want to thank you. Your word is life. And your word is light. Your word is everything we need. You have demonstrated your word, Father, to us today that when the ark of God is brought before Dacon's God, Dacon have no choice than to bow. Lord, I present your sons and daughters that every trouble like Dacon in their lives, call it sin, sickness, poverty, fear, failure, discouragement, every evil. Father, I command them to bow in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that from this day, every form of gathering of the wicked ones in the town, in the village, anywhere, because of your sons and daughters and have been planning and planning, spending their time, their money, their energy, Father, this day, let every one of them fall. Let every one of them fall. Let every one of them fall. Father, and their fall shall be great. Just like the temple where all these evil people gather to worship their God, they were celebrating, and Samson brought the temple down. Father, I am asking every temple of evil men, witches and wizards, powers of darkness, unseen forces of spirit. My father, let every one of them collapse in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the fire of God consume them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every evil temple in that village against that, fa that brother, that sister, against that family, let your fire consume them. That temple will no longer exist. And the evil men cannot gather again. Lord, every place that I've gathered before now, scatter them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm asking you, O oh God, that from this day, the name of Jesus will walk in our mouth. The ark of God will keep fighting and defending. The Bible tells us, O oh God, that you will fight for us and we shall hold our peace. As the ark of God was fighting and defending and fighting and defending, all the people saw that this is the finger of God. Lord, I pray that from this moment, let the mighty hand of God begin to walk and fight against every evil power and plot against our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, enemies shall not be able to resist the power of God. In our family, in the church, in our lives, in our business, anywhere we find ourselves, we shall see God walking. We shall see God fighting. We shall see God walking. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the night when we are sleeping, God will work for us. When we are traveling, God will work for us. When we are going for employment, God will work for us. When we are sitting down, God will work for us. Even when we don't even know what we're supposed to do, God will stand by us and work for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I'm asking, O oh God, that from this day, multiply our blessings. Multiply our blessings. Multiply our testimony. Increase your blessing upon our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, our children, our husband, our wives, our members, our pastors, our leaders, anywhere they find themselves, they will see God working for them. All the evil power that have been standing resisting them, O oh God, before now, they come in the dreamland, they come in the physical, they come from the village. My father, from today, their fall will be forever and ever. They will fall and they shall not be able to rise again in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because this is a day of victory. This is a day of a new beginning. This is a day of a new chapter. Let your sons and daughters be glad. Let your sons and daughters rejoice. As they are stepping out of this place, they are living the presence of God with joy, with testimony, with a miracle. Father, unfold your blessing upon their life in the name of Jesus Christ. Every blessing which the enemy has covered, covered, covered. All those blessings that you have released already, but enemy sat on it, cover it. Lord, I pray, let that blessing be uncovered now. Be uncovered now. There's someone here that God has provided a job for, but enemy sat down on that job saying, you can't get this job. Father, remove that enemy. Somebody here, yeah, God has blessed with a child. And the devil keep fighting. You cannot conceive. You cannot conceive. Father, remove that enemy. There's somebody here yeah, that God wants to give a contract. God wants to bless. But there's enemy standing and fighting and resisting. He said it cannot come to him. It cannot come to her. Father, let such enemies be removed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That covered blessing is uncovered now. Receive your healing. Receive your children. Receive your job. Receive your contract. Receive your miracle. Thank you, Father, because you have answered me. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Let the people of God shout a better amen.